Because I was unable to do the video for my sermon today at church, I'm going to do it right now following church. I am preaching with the thought today, turn it over to Jesus and my key verse is coming from the 11th chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 28th verse. The 28th verse says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, for the past couple of weeks, I have been focusing in on living for the better. We have been going down a pathway of living our best lives. And in order for us to live our best lives, we've seen that we need to choose God over everything. And at the same time, last week, we saw that we need to learn to be open to God's correction. When God corrects us, we should be willing to follow his correction. Now, in my sermon today, I want to focus on anxiety and stress. And the reason why I want to focus on anxiety and stress is because it is impossible for us to live our best lives. It's impossible for us to live for the better. If we let anxiety, if we let stress have rule over us, the one thing that all of us should do when it comes to anxiety, when it comes to what we are worrying about, what we are stressing about, the things that are freaking us out, we must learn to turn these things over to Jesus. And as the song says, he will work all of these things out for us. Now, there are some who live amongst us who live with this idea that a little stress, stress is good for you. Now, the logic behind this idea, for those of you who may be confused about this, it is a carnal logic, meaning that it is worldly. And the logic, it begins with this idea that stress is natural to us. It is normal. The reason why it's natural, the reason why it is normal to us is because you and I, we deal with stress every day of our life. And because stress is natural in their minds, because it is normal in their minds, they believe that we should learn to tolerate stress. That's what many who are of a worldly mindset would say to you. Learn to to tolerate your stress. You see, some, they believe without stress in their life, they believe that they would not have any motivations. They feel that they would become bored. And in their boredom, they believe that they would become depressed. They believe that without any stress in their life, that they would fall to depression. Now, with a little stress, the belief with having that motivation, the belief is that you can accomplish all of your your challenges. You can meet your challenges head on and you can overcome those challenges. With a little stress, the idea is that you can accomplish your dreams. You can accomplish your goals as well with just a little stress in your life. So in a twisted sort of way, the worldly mindset spins stress up to not be a bad thing. It spins stress up to actually be a good thing for you. Good because when we meet our challenges head on and we beat those challenges, when we accomplish our dreams, when we accomplish our goals, we end up happy. And so a little stress In a twisted way, the world would say it leads to happiness in your life. And again, all of this, I want to remind you, it is coming from a carnal mindset. It is coming from a worldly mindset. Now, admittedly, a part of me understands this thought. A part of me understands this idea because I enjoy working under a little pressure. You know, as a kid, I grew up imagining taking the final shot in a basketball game. I imagined uh, being up to hit with the bases loaded and there being two outs in the bottom of the ninth. I'm pretty sure a lot of you probably thought the same thing or you thought of some high pressure situation. You know, a few of us, we seem to work better 
when we are racing against the clock. You know, there's a thrill, there's an excitement uh, that helps us in trying to beat the clock. But I tell you today that if you're going to operate that way, if you're going to operate with that kind of stress, if you're going to operate under that kind of pressure, then you better have a good handle on being able to deal with pressure. Because if you don't, if you don't have a good handle on dealing with pressure, you're setting yourself up for a major catastrophe. You're setting yourself up for a major disaster. And that's the last thing that any of us should want. Any of us, we, we should not want uh, to be crushed by pressure and we should not want to live stressed out in our lives. That's no way for us to live for the better. That is no way for us to live our best life at all. So spiritually speaking here today, I want you to understand that our soul, it is not supposed to be stressed out. Our soul, it is not supposed to be filled with anxiety today. You see, there is a reason why we see here in my key verse today from the 11th chapter of Matthew's gospel. There is a reason why we see Jesus invite all of us to come unto him. All of us who are late, who labor, all of us who are heavy laden, that means burdened. There is a reason why he invites us to come unto him. Now, to understand that reason, we must come to understand what it is that the Lord desires to do with our burdens. Jesus invites us to come unto him with our burdens so that he can give us, he says there in our key verse, so that he can give us rest. Now, for us again to understand the reason as to why Jesus invites us more fully to come unto him with our burdens, I feel we need to understand the state that our soul should be in compared to the state that our soul is in when we refuse to turn our anxieties and our worries over to Jesus. Now to do this, I want to reference back to a verse that I have been calling on for about a month and a half now from the first chapter of Genesis and the 26th verse. Now this is a verse that takes a look at when God created mankind and we see his thoughts. This scripture shows us the Godhead saying there, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Now, as I have said, as, as I have shared with you for the past month and a half, when God created mankind, he did not create us to be sinners. God created us righteous. We were without flaws. God created us, in other words, to be perfect. When you flip over to the second chapter of Genesis and you see where the Lord breathed his the breath of life into our nostrils, when he breathed his spirit into us and we became living beings, we have a soul. Our soul, in the same way that mankind was created, our soul was created without flaws. Our souls were righteous. They were perfect. Now, again, for those who do not quite understand what this means, God created us in our souls not to have any anxiety. He created us not to have any stress. He created you not to have any worries. Now, of course, this went away when mankind sinned in the garden. You see, when we take a look back at Adam and Eve in the garden, when they were in the garden, you never read scripture where it seems like they stressed or they had any anxieties about what they would eat in the garden or about what they would wear in the garden. They didn't have that worry. The only thing they, they had to do was allow the Lord to attend to their every need. That's all they had to do in the garden. So stress itself did not enter into the picture until man fell in the garden. It was until man disobeyed in the garden and was made to toil the earth. That is when stress crept into our life. That is when mankind had to begin to deal with anxiety, began to deal with worry about what could happen. So sin, disobedience against the way of God, I want you to understand that it's also not natural to our soul. 
Again, God did not make you to be a sinner. He made you righteous. He made you holy. He made you in his image and in his likeness. Okay. He made you perfect. So because our soul was not created in, in, in sin, I want you to understand that its natural state is one that is perfect. So sin, if I was to liken it to anything, when it comes to our soul, sin is ultimately like a virus. It invades our soul. It pollutes it. It corrupts it. It darkens our soul. And so the question that I would ask you today is this. Do we tolerate viruses in our bodies? When I was at church, my auntie, she was immediately shaking her head. No, and even spoke up and said, no, we don't tolerate viruses in our bodies. You know what we do? We go to a doctor. If a virus has sat with us too long, we go to a doctor. We, we find medication. We take medicine. If we're afraid to go to the doctor, you know, some of us are going to remember, remember some of those remedies uh, that the old folks used to have. And we're going to try to use those things on us so that we can get better. Our choice when it comes to a virus is to combat that virus. We don't tolerate a virus to be within us. We, we combat it. We, we fight it. So because stress comes from sin, stress, I want you to understand today is essentially a symptom of the virus that is known as sin. So again, I would tell you today that we should not tolerate that symptom. We should not tolerate the virus that is sin. We should be combating sin. The world would say that you should tolerate stress. You should tolerate anxiety in, in your life. But we ought not be tolerating that virus in our soul is what I would say to you today. So if you were to picture stress and what it does to our soul, I would have you picture a rope or a rubber band that is being stretched out to its max, that is being stressed and it is being twisted and that stretching and that twisting, it is building up a great deal of tension. It is building up so much tension that there is only one thing that can happen if that stress is not alleviated, if it's not relieved. That one thing that would happen to that rope, the one thing that would happen to that rubber band is that they would tear in two. So picture that happening to your soul. That's what stress does to our soul. You see, in its natural state, our soul, it should become our soul. It should be relaxed. In other words, our soul in its natural state, it should be at peace. It should be resting. Whereas stress, when it enters into our soul, it begins to twist. It begins to distort our soul. It's, it's putting as much pressure on our soul as it possibly can. It's unhealthy for our soul. And it ends up being that only one thing can happen to a soul that is overstressed, that is being stretched and that is being twisted out to its max. The one thing that could end up happening to our soul in this situation is that our soul would tear. It would shatter. It would break. So imagine this. Imagine trying to walk around in the world today, living your best life and your soul has been stressed out to the max, to the point that it is torn, that it is broken and that it is shattered apart. Imagine how you would operate with your soul being in an unhealthy condition. Would you tolerate that? Would you tolerate that in your soul today? So again, I want to point out to you that stress, it is not healthy. I don't care what the world says. Stress is not healthy for you. In the book of Proverbs, the 12th chapter in the 25th verse, you'll find that the Proverbs states, Anxiety in the heart, that is the soul, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression. So in other words, an anxious soul is one that is heavy. 
An anxious soul, a soul that is filled with anxiety, a soul that is filled with stress, it is a soul that is weighed down. The world says again that a little stress is good for the soul, but I tell you today that a little stress is not good. The world would say to you today that a little stress, it can help you in your fight against depression. But again, I tell you today, according to sound doctrine, according to spiritual, that a little stress is not good for depression at all. Anxiety in the soul, the spirit says, and sound doctrine says, is the cause of depression. You see, your soul is who you are. It is the foundation of all of your desires. And from the foundation of all of your desires are born your thoughts, are born all of your emotions, are born all of your actions as well. So again, consider with a broken and a shattered and a depressed soul, consider today what that soul would lead you down in your life. A soul filled with anxiety would have grave effects. It would have grave effects on your mental state. It would have grave effects on your emotional state. It would have grave effects even in your physical state as well. You see, in our mental state, an overly stressed soul, it can, it can cause us to be dazed and it can cause us to be confused in our thoughts. Rather than thinking clearly, our thoughts in this overly stressed state, they will become muddled. And they will become so muddled that we will be more susceptible in making poor decisions in our life rather than making good decisions in our life. In our emotional state, an overly stressed soul is, again, no good for us because we will become cold and we become a hollow person. In other words, we will become a person that is empty on the inside. And again, this is certainly no good for us because again, in its natural and in its healthy state, our soul is supposed to be filled with peace. It is supposed to be filled with happiness. It is supposed to be filled with joy. It's certainly not supposed to be empty. And again, it's certainly not supposed to be dark and it's healthy and in this natural state, our soul, it is supposed to be bright. It is supposed to be lively, if you will. And again, in our physical state, an overly stressed soul can lead one to becoming a complete and utter mess. We know what stress does to us physically. We know that stress can run our blood pressure sky high. And again, we certainly know that that is no good for us. We know that Stress can lead to having poor heart conditions, which again, we know is no good for us. It can lead to several other poor health conditions that we can have physically. So living with a heavy and a burdened soul due to stress, due to anxiety, it's simply no way for any of us to live. We, we can't and we should not tolerate living with a soul that is filled with anxiety and is filled with stress. What should we be doing? We should be combating that, right? We, we, we should be combating living with a soul that is filled with stress. We should be combating living with a soul that is filled with anxiety. And I tell you that there is nothing of the world. There is no worldly logic that can help you defeat that can help you in combating anxiety and stress that is in your heart, that is in your soul. You have to turn to the spiritual in order to defeat anxiety and stress that is in your heart. Now, sadly, many of us are living with a soul that has been bent and twisted, that has been distorted, that is out of shape. It is, again, rather difficult to live your best life if you're living with a soul that is in that shape. So rather than living with a soul that is 
being contaminated and invaded by this virus rather than tolerating that. Again, we must combat it and we must do it the right way. And the right way for us to do this is to turn it over to Jesus. Now, as we saw last week in my sermon, we must learn to be open. We must learn to trust in the wise counsel of the Lord. We cannot be foolish when it comes to doing this. Again, as we take another look back at my key verse for today, there in the 11th chapter of Matthew's gospel, the invite that we see here from Jesus to go unto him with our burdens so that he can give us rest. I would say to you that that sounds like wise counsel to me. It sounds like the kind of wise counsel that you and I should be heeding in our life, especially, especially when it comes to dealing with our stress, our worries and the anxiety that we have in our life. Now, the question that we must answer today is whether or not we are going to do it. We must answer today. Will we truly turn these things over to Jesus and allow him to take care of these things for us? Or will we continue to live trying to handle our worries, trying to take on our stress and our anxieties by ourselves or by some herbal remedy that is being provided by the world? You see, again, whether you realize this or not, your health, it comes down to what you choose. You see, all of us, we choose whether we want to be in good or in poor health spiritually. All of us, we choose whether or not we want to, again, be stressed out or not. Now, somebody may say, well, pastor, I didn't desire for this bad thing to happen in my life. But what I want you to hear from me today is that you are in control of your life. Nobody else is in control of your life. You are in control of your life. You are in control of how you respond. You are in control of how you react in your life to all of the things that happen around you. You must make a choice when it comes to whether or not you are going to be happy or not. Again, something, all right, someone may think to themselves, And I didn't choose for these things to happen to me. But again, you have a choice. And this is certainly true. I believe for all of us is that we have a choice whether or not we're going to live with anxiety. We have a choice whether we're going to worry. We have a choice whether we are going to be stressed out or not. Again, I want you to understand today that you are in control of this. You are in control of your worries. You are in control of your stress. You are in control of your anxiety as well. So my hope here is that after having gone 23 minutes, okay, after having gone into so great of detail about the natural state of our soul and how it is unhealthy for us to live, to tolerate anxiety and stress in our soul today, My hope is that you would choose to combat it, that you would choose to combat the virus that is sin and its symptoms that stress, worry and anxiety. So if you want to do something about stress, if you want to do something about anxiety in your life today, I want to share with you some sound doctrine in order to defeat the virus that is sin and all of its symptoms. So my first encouragement to you today in dealing with stress and anxiety is this. Stop worrying. You should stop worrying. Now, of course, that's easier said than done. I know. But again, at the same time, stop worrying. In his letter to the Philippians, we'll see in the fourth chapter of Philippians and the sixth verse. Paul tells us to be anxious for nothing. And he says there, never worry about anything. Never worry. Stop worrying. That's again, my encouragement from sound doctrine. Stop worrying. In his first letter, Peter told us to cast all our cares upon the Lord because God cares for us. God loves you. So again, 
If you know that God cares for you, if you know that God loves you, if you know that God is going to supply your every need, why are you worrying? Why are you worrying? Again, easier said than done. But again, it must be said at the same time, we have to stop worrying. We have to stop driving ourselves crazy over our worries. So instead of giving in to our anxieties, we must we must first confront what it is that's truly stressing us out. We must confront what it is that we are worrying about. So if we consider it, if we think about it for a moment, all right, if you are as hard of a worker as you probably brag about, you are in the workplace. Why do you worry about the workplace? You know, for those of you who are in school, if you are getting your schoolwork, then why would you worry about school? You are doing the best you can at school, right? You're doing the best that you can in your workplace. Some of us would say bills is our worry. But again, if we have if we have work and we have been paying our bills over and over and over again, why would we worry about it? Why would we stress ourselves out about it? Again, we we have a choice. You see, if we are doing these things, we don't have anything to worry about. So what is it that causes us to stay up at night? What is it that causes us to toss and causes us to turn? What is it? I believe that if we dig deeper, we will see that the real answer to what keeps us up at night, the real answer to what causes us to toss and to turn are the thoughts about the things that are beyond our control. We often think about what could go wrong and we begin to wonder, are we prepared? Are we ready for something that could go wrong? We begin to, to worry whether we can go through something going wrong in our life. That's, that's the, the thing that we worry about the most something going wrong in our lives. We seemingly have adopted this to be a truth that what can go wrong will inevitably go wrong. And many of us, we live with that inevitability in our lives and it stresses us out. It, it causes us to worry day in and in day out. It's constantly on our minds. So, Rather than living in worry about what is beyond our control and what could potentially go wrong in our lives. Again, we saw Peter and Paul say there, stop worrying. Don't worry about it. And again, if that's not good enough for us, yeah, we'll see Jesus tell us the same thing in the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel. He tells us, stop worrying. And he specifically tells us, stop worrying about tomorrow. You see, tomorrow is our biggest trigger for our anxieties and for our worries and for our stress. We're always living in tomorrow rather than living in today. Jesus said that if nature does not have to worry because the Lord cares for it, surely again, we ought not be so carried away in our hearts about the things that are beyond our control because God's got us. God will attend to our every need. So again, my first encouragement to you today is stop worrying. Don't worry about what could go wrong or what might go wrong. Stop worrying about tomorrow. Turn it over to Jesus and the Lord again will attend to your every need. Too often I feel like we live with this stress and this worry about what could go wrong. And we live with about tomorrow as if God is not in control of all things in our lives, including tomorrow as well. No, we may not know what is ahead of us, but again, I can promise you that God certainly knows what's ahead of all of us. And I can promise you again that God is in control. He's in control of what could go wrong and he's in control of tomorrow. Again, thinking back to the 29th chapter of Jeremiah and the 11th verse where the Lord plainly says of tomorrow, 
that tomorrow his thoughts towards us are again of giving us a future and a hope. That's what God's thoughts about our tomorrow is a future. Again, a hope in that tomorrow, a hope in that future as well. The Lord, we must remember, is omnipotent. God, we must remember, is omniscient. We must remember that the Lord is omnipresent. We must remember that God, again, is almighty, that he's sovereign, that all authority belongs to him. Stop worrying. When we get lost in our worries about tomorrow and we begin to stress in our soul, again, I want you to trust in the Lord, because when we don't do so, it shows a lack of faith that we have in him, whereas we should have total faith in the Lord. If God tells us not to worry about tomorrow, then guess what we ought to do? We ought not worry about tomorrow. Stop worrying. So with this thought in mind, my second encouragement when it comes to handling anxiety and stress would be to find comfort in God being in control. Trust in the Lord. Find comfort that all authority is in the Lord's hands. Rather than living in worry about what, again, could potentially go wrong in our lives, we should learn to think more positively. As the writer of the book of Hebrews said, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hope. Our soul should be filled with hope. So in my second encouragement today, I will tell you when it comes to anxiety and stress, trust that God is in control and live with hope. Have hope. Think positively rather than go to a place of doom and gloom, as we often do. To the Philippians, Paul, he encouraged, he said there in the fourth chapter, in the eighth verse, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, he said there, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, Paul said, meditate on these things. Meditate. I love that the New King James Version translate that word meditate into that verse. See, to meditate, it means to focus one's thoughts. It's to reflect on or to ponder over. To meditate means to plan. It means to project in one's mind. You see, to meditate, it it speaks about how deep we ought to think on things. That's why I love that the word meditate is used there uh, in that verse. Too often, we end up letting our hearts meditate on the negative rather than letting our hearts meditate on the positive. And then we wonder, why we are stressing out and why we have so much anxiety in our life. When we take all of our anxieties, when we take our stress, when we take our burdens, and again, when we turn all of these things over to Jesus, why should we go back to a place of negativity? We shouldn't be doing that. When we turn it over to Jesus, and again, we know that he's going to take care of all of our stress, our worries, and our anxiety, Guess where our mind should go? It should go to the positive. We shouldn't be going to the negative at all. Again, Paul said to the Philippians that he said to them that should they heed what they learned and received from him, if they were to actually meditate on good, Paul, he said to them that the God of peace would be with them. Peace would be with them. So again, I would encourage you still under that second encouragement for today. Meditate on what's good. When we meditate on the good, when we meditate on the positive, guess what that does for your soul? Our soul, it can find peace. We can have peace of heart. We can have peace of mind. Again, 
If we look back there at that key verse, we'll see again that Jesus said that if we were to go to him, that he would give us rest. That rest that he speaks of, there is peace. Jesus says to us, if we go to him with our anxieties, if we go to him with our stress, our worries, that he will give us peace from those things. Why go to anyone else on a spiritual matter when Jesus is the one who's in charge and can help us and can take away those things from us and then give us rest, peace in our soul. To the disciples, Jesus said that their hearts should not be troubled. Their hearts should not be stressed because he has given to them his peace. And again, how did Jesus go about doing this for us? Well, he did this by overcoming the world. He did this by overcoming the virus that is sin. So therefore, he did this by overcoming the symptoms of sin as well. You and I, we can overcome sin, its symptoms as well, through having faith in him. Now, earlier we saw a proverb there from the 12th chapter in the 25th verse that said anxiety weighs the heart down. But there's another proverb there in the 14th chapter of Proverbs and the 30th verse that states a sound heart. Again, that's one that's in its natural state. He states there that it gives life to the body. So a soul that is in its natural state, a soul that's not stressed out, a soul that is calm and a soul that is at peace, it will bring you, it will give you life. You won't be depressed. You won't be freaking out. You won't be stressed out. You won't be filled with any anxieties if you turn it over to Jesus because he will give you rest. Now, my final encouragement, I would believe is one that you are very familiar with and you have probably heard before. My final encouragement to you when it comes to dealing with anxiety, when it comes to dealing with stress, it takes us back to that sixth verse in the fourth chapter of Philippians. Where Paul said in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Paul said, let your request be made known to God. In other words, Paul was saying when it came to your anxieties and to your stress, Paul said, pray. And I know that there are a lot of people that will laugh, that will chuckle at the idea of of praying to God. But prayer, do not underestimate prayer for one second. Prayer is our most valuable tool. Prayer, it is our most valuable powerful weapon in defeating our enemy. Prayer is the most valuable. It is the most powerful weapon that you have in combating the virus that is sin. Prayer. Prayer will fix it. And I'm pretty sure you've heard that before. So my final encouragement to you when it comes to anxiety, when it comes to stress, would be to talk to God. It would be to pray. And I want you to understand that we shouldn't be talking to God about a few things that is on our mind or just some things that are on our mind. We should be talking to God about everything that's on our mind, the good and the bad. You see, again, I would tell you today that God desires for you to come to him. Okay, if you happen to look at my Sunday school lesson from today as well, you will see that we have a great intercessor. We have a high priest in Jesus Christ who desires for us to come to him with all that is on our mind, all that's on our heart today to deliver it to him so that it can be taken to the Lord. Again, remember what Jesus said there in our key verse. He invited us. He calls for us to go to him with not some of our burdens. And again, with not just a few of our burdens, but with all of our burdens. And again, that's exactly what you and I should be doing. We shouldn't be holding back with any of our stress, any of our anxieties, any of the things that's keeping us up at night. We shouldn't be holding it back. We should be telling it all to the Lord today. 
You see, when you talk to and when you pray to the Lord, you should be like a fountain. You should be like a fountain and you should be telling him absolutely everything that is on your heart so that you aren't weighed down so that you aren't feeling heavy in your heart once you're done talking to the Lord. A lot of times, some of us, we are too afraid to pray to the Lord. A lot of times, some of us, we leave some things to ourselves. And then we wonder why we still feel so weighed down after we are done praying to the Lord. Whereas we should, again, be like a fountain. We should just open up and we should tell him everything that is on our mind. You see, we should be telling the Lord today, all that frustrates us so that God could deal with so that he can handle again what is frustrating us. We should be telling the Lord everything that we desire, all of the desires of our heart. We should be telling God so that he can do as he has promised to do so that he can give us the desires of our heart today. I again, tell you today that when we talk to the Lord, when we pray to him, we should be telling him exactly what's stressing us out so that God could alleviate us of all of our anxieties, our worries and and our stress today. When we are depressed, we should let the Lord know we should be telling him this so that God can lift us up out of the pit of despair. Again, I tell you. We should tell the Lord about all of our struggles and we should be doing this so that we aren't staying up at night. Worrying about what could potentially go wrong. We should tell God about all of our struggles so that we don't end up driving ourselves absolutely crazy. We should tell God about all of our struggles because God is our problem solver. And he will take care of those struggles. He will take care of your struggles for you. And as the song says, when you turn it over to Jesus, he will work it out. He's going to work out all of the things that you turn over to him. You just have to trust in him. And something that I can testify to you today is that I don't live with anxieties. I don't live with stress. I don't live with worries. Again, will I worry at some points in time? Yes. But. I have found in my life that when I follow these steps that I have shown to you today, again, trusting in the Lord, not worrying, praying to God, letting him know all that is in my heart, that's on my mind, that's stressing me out. I found peace. I found rest. I saw that God was telling the truth. He gave me rest in my soul. And I live with that calm. I live with that peace of heart today because I learned to do these things. I overcame anxiety. I overcame stress having rule over me. And now I live a healthy life. I'm living for the better. And I'm striving to live my best life. And I believe that you can do the absolute same thing if you turn it all over to Jesus. I again know that he will take care of you. Okay? All right, so that's my sermon. I hope that you enjoyed my sermon. And again, I hope that you share what you have heard here today with someone, someone. Share this video with someone, somewhere. And I hope that you again will subscribe and check the description below. You can go to newfoundfaith.org and you can subscribe there for more sermons and for more Sunday school lessons as well. Until next time, may the Lord continue to keep and to bless all of you.